You absolutely need digitals, whether you model for five seconds or five years, whether you model as a hobby or a career, you will need digitals. What you will need is natural or studio lighting, some heels, body conscious clothing, maybe a swimsuit, a camera or newer camera phone, and a remote timer app or person. Beginning with the lighting, we want to avoid direct light. It is too harsh. We don't want light coming from behind you. That creates a lot of shadows, and we're not looking for that in digitals. And natural lighting is really the best choice, but you can do studio lighting. For natural lighting, 1030 to 1130 AM typically gets amazing light. And then if you maybe have too much cloud coverage in the morning, you could also try 230 to 330 PM. So on the left, you see I have studio lighting. And on the right, I have natural lighting. Now, normally I would say the background on the right is a little distracting. You can kind of see the trees in the reflection of this glass door, and you can kind of see through the glass door into the office. But this was my agency, and the agency constantly took photos in front of this door. So since they were the ones doing it, it really didn't matter. They're allowed to break the rules and do what they want, and the digital seemed to have done fine. But I would not suggest having a background like this. I feel like it's a little distracting. The heels, they should be three to four inch heels. Pumped or strappy are a good choice and nude or a basic color like a black. Avoid wedges and embellishments. Wedges are not heels and we don't want them staring at the shiny sparkly red shoe rather than your glorious face. We are trying to get them to look at you and book you. You are the center of attention when it comes to digitals. It's all about you. For the wardrobe, we want clean, fitted, solid colors. Avoid patterns and embellishments. Again, they can be distracting. For the camera, you will want a digital camera or newer camera phone. Use a tripod with timer or a friend, a photographer, your agent. It doesn't have to be the highest resolution ever. Just don't have it be blurry. As for the background, you're going to want solid colors. Muted pale colors allow you to really pop, but a bright blue like you see to the right can also work well. You want to have little to no features, so you see a little bit of texture on the top picture, but we're not looking for a lot going on in the background. And avoid words or logo or artwork. So some no's would be like this on the left. I mean, on the right, where you see the shadows are creating lines all across the wall. Or like you see on the bottom, there's a bunch of furniture and clothing behind me. That's distracting. There's also a lot of shadows going on. We don't want darkness. We don't want shadows. We don't want distractions. As for your hair, it should be your natural hair texture, the way that you would show up to jobs and casting. So it shouldn't look like you just rolled out of bed. It should look like you put about five minutes of effort into your hair. You smoothed out some frizz, you brushed or did something to it. Maybe you pulled it back into a ponytail, but go with your natural texture. You can add some shine spray or oil, but we're not looking for a really done kind of look. It doesn't have to be the smoothest, nicest, prettiest, shiniest hair ever. Although if it already looks like that, that's awesome. And the styling could be like a ponytail, half up, half down, maybe all down, or even a low bun. But it doesn't need to be anything complicated. We don't need headbands in your hair. We don't need lots of uh, different colorful features in your hair of clips and, and, and bows and things. We don't need any of that. So here's some examples of how I've done my hair. The first one you see, it's a low pony with the pony pulled around front to show the length and texture. Then you see I've got the hair down and it's got a little bit of a blowout thing going on. And then in the next one, you see my hair is just its big wavy self that day. But I put half in front and half in back so it wouldn't overwhelm. You want to make sure if your hair can be its own full on entity that you try and tame it down a little. Because unless you're doing a hair casting, we don't want it to be all about the hair 24 seven. We wanna show your great face and you can get hidden if you put all that hair. If I would have had the hair on both shoulders, it just hides my face. So that's why we put half of the hair back if you have a lot of hair. And then you see the last one, my hair is like down and straight because I was going through a phase where I worked more with straight hair. So I was just always straightening it. 
So I was going to castings with it straight. So that's why it was straight in the photos. If you're not going to straighten it all the time, doing digitals with straight may not be the best choice. But everything in the modeling industry is a case by case basis. So do whatever is working for you and whatever your agent thinks is going to get you work. For makeup, we're looking for very basic, little to no makeup. Most clients and agents would prefer you literally wear nothing at all, just some moisturizer. But if you'd like to add a little bit, you can fill in your brows, maybe curl the lashes or use some like brown mascara so it doesn't look so like makeup. And a lip conditioner is always a great option. If you're doing commercial, you can add a little bit of pink or peach to your lips or your cheeks. And you want to avoid things like dark colors or glitter or false lashes. For the angles and frames, you're going to look for a 3-4 shot, a head shot, a profile head shot, a full length, and maybe also a profile full length. So here you see these are all 3-4 shots. You're going to get it either right below the knee, at the knee, or just a little bit above the knee, almost mid-thigh to the head. Here you see headshots. We're looking for about waist up or shoulders up. And you can see you can do different, different kinds of poses. Your head can be tilted a little bit. You don't always have to be exactly straight on. Full length, same thing. You can tilt your body a little, put your legs a little different. You can even play with your hair a little bit. Whatever works for you. And for the profile in headshot or full length, you would turn entirely to the side, 90 degrees. And you would, of course, get either head to toe or about bra and up. You want to avoid things like props or wind, heavy shadows, or blocking your face with your hair and your hands. We don't need you to have on layers or anything like that. I'm sure you've got great style, but that's not what we're really going for here. If you want to do maybe one photo like that, especially to post it to your social medias, that's cool. But when sending it to clients, they're not looking for a bunch of layers and props and things like that, unless they've asked for it. These are not digitals. You will be surprised how many models have sent in selfies and bad photos that do not fit the descriptions I have just given you. All digitals should fit those descriptions. Like no matter what agency, no matter what country, they almost all follow like 90% of what I said. They all look the same. It's not about trying to be different. You are different enough on your own. It is about trying to show the clients what you look like with no hair, no makeup, and good lighting so they can see you. So starting with the top left photo, you see I'm way over lit. I've got a lot of direct sunlight going on. There's shadows going on, and I've got a lot of makeup on. In the next photo in the right, I've got backlighting. You cannot see what color my eyes are. My skin looks a whole nother color and it's just not a good photo. And I've got all these accessories on and all these patterns. Go it's not a good photo. Then at the bottom right where I'm in the bikini on the beach, like it's a cute photo and but like it's not helping them to really see anything. The perspective, you can't see how tall I am. You can't see my body that well. It's not a good digital. And finally, the bottom left, you see I'm in my car bad lighting all around, lots of glare, lots of shadow. These are not digitals. Do not shoot these. Do not turn these in. People will not take you seriously if you send these in. And it's horrible to say this, but unfortunately, a lot of agents talk shit 24-7. When they are receiving these emails and submissions, they will talk shit if you can't follow basic directions on how to take digitals and they will remember that you sent these things and then they don't think of you as so much professional and you got to jump through more hoops to prove to them that you have learned from these bad digitals. So please do not send things that look like this. As for your measurements, because a lot of times when you send your digitals, you will get asked for your measurements. The basic measurements, your height, you know how to take your height, I hope. I hope you know how to take your own shoe size. Your jean size is going to be the jean size you wear most likely in women's numbers. So that's 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and the list goes on. Not the juniors of 135, 
not the women's of two, four, six. It is the 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, and on. Your bust is going to be that very first purple line you see going across my chest. You want to make sure that your measuring tape goes around your entire body straight. So either use a mirror or get a friend to help you to make sure it's not like uneven because that's going to give you the wrong measurement. And so it should basically be going across your nipples to get that bust measurement. This is not the bust of your bra. This is your bust. When they ask for your bra size, that'll be the bra size that you purchase. Your waist is going to go across the middle of your body like you see with the middle arrow. And your hips are going to be that bottom purple arrow that is going across the largest part of your bum. So if you carry your bum really high, you're going to have it a little bit higher. If your bum is in the middle, that it's the biggest than the middle. If your bum carries really low, then you would pull it a little bit lower. Whatever part is the largest part of your hip, that's where you are going to get that measurement. And that's everything you need to know for your digitals. If you feel anything is missing, please comment below because this is very important. Like I said, digitals are very essential and I want to make sure you are able to nail them. And if this has helped you at all, please share it with me either in email or publicly using the hashtag Model S Mindset. And if you would like to book a one-on-one, -on -one, the link is provided.